Let's let's just jump into it. All right, we have a Pathfinder. Sir. Cool. All right. How is Pathfinder feeling for you? Uh, I picked the class up when it first came out, and I kind of just like fell in love with it. So. Mhm. Mm Stuck I, with it the whole way. Yeah. I mean, I've tried out all the other classes. I just I have a I have a thing for archers. Okay. So the Kane class really excites me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I just came back to the game, like, literally a week ago. Okay. Uh, I stopped playing right when the familiar revamp happened, so I have no clue what any of that stuff is. Cool. So, like, this, the the actual second version? or Well, I mean, if you saw part of it, all of that changed anyway, so we'll when have they... to... <laughs> yeah, like, I did the whole Junior Boogie familiar farming when the thing was broken. Right, and right. That's like when I stopped playing. And then you didn't open them and well we'll get to we'll get to familiars in oh I mean we can jump into familiars right away if you want to. That's fine with me also. Uh I, I don't really have any. I have like an IED familiar and then like my snail and that's about it. So which ones do you have from before? Uh most of them are on my Kana. Right. I like okay. have a I have a drop rate familiar and an IED familiar, and that's about it. Okay, okay. I don't have like save familiars that you haven't opened yet? Uh, not anymore. I rolled like 150 of them and got like absolute garbage. Okay, on the... Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's... The rates aren't great to, <laughs> to get like amazing stuff on, so... Um, yeah, I mean, we could talk a little bit about familiars if you want, and then we can get that out of the way and then move on from there. Um, All right. So, yeah, to get a little bit of drop rate, do you know how it works with drop rate stacking with familiars and how you would want to use that? No, I like I haven't done any of the new familiar stuff, so mm -hmm. last I checked it was like spider and that doesn't stack with anything. Right, so it does stack with some things, but you have to be care well, not be careful, but like there's some things that you might have on because you're like, oh, le what if it stacks? Or you, you know, you can think that it stacks, but then when it doesn't, you might actually be hurting yourself because if you put something else in that actually does stack, you might increase your rates, right? Um, so the way that it generally works is, um, you know, the difference between um, meso drop rate and item drop rate. Yeah. And with meso obtain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So once you have enough item drop rate to get bags, then mezzo drop rate by itself doesn't do anything anymore, right? So you want to prioritize high chunks of drop rate, and then if you already have enough drop rate in your in your set or you know from other effects, uh, then even the familiar's drop rate itself doesn't help you get more money, but will help you get a bunch of other items, right? That all makes sense. Yeah. Um, so basically, with this here, this kind of shows you. When you see a name of a line on a familiar, how much drop rate that does represent. Okay, I see. Um, and so these... Like I have one that... Yeah? My drop familiar is... So it's the increases item and meso drop rate, and then the second line is item drop rate. Okay, so the regular one? So like the... This... Uh, this one? Increases item and meso drop rate with no... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's a plus 40. And then if you have two sources that would do the same thing, um, then whichever one is the biggest source, will that's the only one that will apply. Okay. So since it's the one that's the second line says item drop rate, that stacks. Uh, so does the second one says this? Yes. So, okay, so if you summon that one, you will see two effects in the top right, probably, and then one will increase your uh, mezzo drop rate by 40%, and the other one will increase your item drop rate by 50%. So it's not like stacking, but both oh, of them okay, are in effect. Yeah, but like the... So it just takes the highest value. For exactly, that. exactly, yeah. So if you have enough... Um, yeah, if you have enough item drop rate with the rest of your stuff, then the mezzo drop rate from that one line actually doesn't do anything, but it's the mainly the 50%, so that's already good. And then the old spider uh, that you remember, that's this line, right? I increased item and mezzo drop rate by a large amount, so that one is yep. th that one is just 10% higher than what you have if you have increased item drop rate. So that's very, very close. It's not like you're hugely behind or anything. <laughs> so hopefully that's uh, good to know. Yeah, that definitely. Uh, yeah, like the the major like the 
the big one that everyone you know hungers for is the increased item drop rate by a large amount that's the basically the old wolf spider from non-reboot um that's plus 100 percent drop rate so that's like that's like the crazy big one um can I get that on epic i can right yeah. yeah i think so it's it seems to be very hard to get on epic but i've seen people get it um mostly people get it on unique but yeah it is possible on epic um so this tax with um pretty much everything but like the internal stacking with other familiars that's important right um, the, the one thing it doesn't stack with is when you have drop coupons that are like the blue ones from that you get from events and stuff. It does stack with um, Legion drop coupon. Oh, nice. So, yeah, either for longer sessions if you want to get a bunch of nodes or if you're just, you know, cramming all of your daily bosses or your weekly bosses into a session, pop a coupon, pop a familiar pop decent holy symbol you know all of this stuff this is like the ideal situation is if you have the coupon the large drop rate there's also item acquisition that exists in unique that does stack with drop rate but it's only 10 percent extra and it's only unique so it's like you know ideal situation not really realistic to get all of this right um yeah. equip potential stack up to 200 percent, so up to 10 lines of 20 percent work um but and then um, KMS has like a total stack max of 300%, but GMS doesn't have that. So we could just stack all of these things together. So the, the total percentage could be, um, 464% with 20% extra equips. If you use a, a greed pendant, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So more realistic is this. So you'll be closer to this, right? Um, so yeah, the Legion coupon, uh, familiar with 60. So in your case, it's 50. That's really close. Uh, quit potential is usually like four lines when you're training and then maybe nine lines when you're bossing, right? Or at the end, because you have nine equips, everyone has one line. So that's 180. That's really close to that max already as well. Uh, max decent holy symbol, you know, that's something you eventually get, probably not immediately. 10% um, on an inner ability, that's pretty reasonable, I think. Item acquisition potion, greed pendant. So that's more, uh, is more the realistic situation that you're looking at. That takes care of the the stacking of everything. So that also puts into perspective, like when you open up a familiar, like do I need this at all, or you know, can I rank it up again, or do I use it as a <laughs> as one to uh, to feed to another one? Um, and then the familiar guide itself. There's a lot of information here about um, like leveling it up and ranking it up. Um, basically, you level them up by having them out and killing monsters near your level. So that's pretty simple. Um, you rank them up by going into the fusion tab where you can only fuse it with other familiars that have the exact same name. So that's basically something you only do if you're training in a certain area for a long period of time where they drop and then you can start stacking them together, getting them up to epic, revealing it. If it's bad, maybe tier it up to unique. If it's bad, it's just a paperweight. If it's good, then you put it in your, your set basically. No. Nope. Just a just a reg server thing. Yeah, we have no red cards, so um, it's uh, yeah, it's like a one-time thing. <laughs> you you tear it up if it's bad, then yeah. You can the only thing you can do if it's bad in epic, you can push it to unique for like another chance, but uh, it doesn't matter then. If uh, if if uh, coupons and things stack, then it doesn't matter which order you pop them in. Um. Yeah, so that's the rarity. Um, if you want to fuse to a higher rank, then there's a chance to fail as well. And if you fail, you lose half of your uh, your fusion rank up points. You keep your level of your of, of your familiar, but your rank up points will get uh, cut down. So then you have to fuse them again. So this is mainly Moonbridge and up is where familiars drop just from regular monsters you're training on. Before that, they don't really drop. I mean, you're going to be changing, switching areas when you're leveling so much, right? That you don't get enough of the same ones, really. I uh, haven't seen a single familiar from Arcana. I don't know. No, they don't. They don't drop there. Only Moonbridge and higher. So like oh, all, okay, all of the Nebris area. Yeah. So they want you to you know level and <laughs> move move up so that you can start doing that while they're training. And not to linger too much in the other areas. I think they're purposefully not implementing uh, familiars for that area to to streamline people to, to move on, basically. Um, 
Yeah, well, you can see by the rank up points that you get uh, that it's really bad to use like rare f uh, epic familiars to level up to unique or something because it gives you three points, but a common gives you one and a rare gives you two. So those numbers are so close. It doesn't really make sense, right? I mean, this should be like one and then five and then 50 and then and 200 or something, right? Uh, but it doesn't scale like that at all. So it's always best to just mass feed the lower level ones. Um, it, it's way more point efficient than using epic or or higher to, to fuse another familiar up, basically. Um, gotcha. Of course, uh, unless you have a bunch of junior boogies, because at that point you're not going to be farming in the junior boogie map to get try to get all of those from epic to unique or something. Because, yeah, the map layout and the drop rate there is just not quite there. Uh, but yeah, people with a decent amount of drop rate um, in one totem get, I think, about get about um, 400 familiars. If you kill like at a good speed. So, you know, that's... Uh, and that's in the Moon Ridge area, right? Yeah, uh, Moon Ridge or Labyrinth or Tenebris, yeah, those areas. Yeah. Had a coins for the familiar shop. So if you have familiars that are shitty uh, and they're uh, lower level ones and they're all different ones and you don't want to, um, you're not doing anything with them anymore, then you can extract them. So you go to collection, then extraction. Um, and then that gives you the, the coins. And then with those coins, you can buy items in the shop. Um, yeah, if, if you have a lot of coins, you can buy a booster pack. It has a small chance of getting some of the familiar badges that are rare to get. Um, and the essence refills 50% of your summon gauge. So the summon gauge works a bit differently now. Um, it just, when you have the familiars out, the summon gauge will go down. Uh, yeah, and then it's when it's... Based on defense, right? Yeah, based on the defense of all the, yeah, of all the familiars. So if you have higher defense ones and you don't really need utility from anything else, then just use a high defense one. And then if you unlock the the ten badges to get the third slot, then you can you know have a third one in there to slow the gauge down even more. Uh, but it is yeah a little bit more important to like desummon them when you don't need them, summon them when you do need them, so you save the gauge a little bit. It takes about two hours to deplete it uh, with like decent def with okay defense. So if you're trying to train more in the day, then you know some of the familiar cards need to be ground up into uh, <laughs> into essence so that you can keep the the familiar out for that extra drop rate buff. Um, do you know about the badges and how all of that works? Uh, I just started looking at them. I got, like, just the one of them to get the, uh... The second slot. The second slot, but I've been slowly working on the ones that I actually need, because I am struggling for IED right now. Yeah, so, well, that's probably something that we'll get to pretty quickly, but, yeah, the... the having two familiars with 15% of IED is pretty much the best you can do at this point. Um, and there's, you know, some drop rate. If the boss is really tricky and the survivability of the party become comes into question, then maybe switching one out for a little bit of healing could be necessary. But the, yeah, you having your enough IED is uh, most important. Um, and that tricks into the um, the potentials, uh, the familiars, summoning the familiars, the gauge, the badges. Yeah, for the for the badges, just look at sets that have monsters that are still in the game, uh, and that are, uh, and have as few bosses as possible. Is that an actual thing, where some of the badges yep. have? Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, reworked recently, but yeah, there's like the. Um, I don't think the maladies are in the game anymore. I believe. Those flying witch, uh, witches. Um, there's some uh, Florina beach monsters here. There's Lorang, Torti, and Clang and stuff are in one of the sets. <laughs> uh, and the... Um, where's the other one? I mean, some this set has a false daimyo. Like, that's going to be a nightmare to get. Um, Black Crow, Dreamy Ghost, Water Goblin, Paper Lantern. Like, these... I don't think you can get to these areas anymore because they're like different monsters now. The Kappa. Yeah, so some of these are... Oh, and I don't think these drop any cards at all, for example. The City Badge ones. I don't think they even drop. So these are all impossible. But yeah, there's a there's a bunch of badges. So like Starter Badge, Snowflake Badge, Oppressor Badge, um, fucking Rebel Badge, uh, Mineral Badge, 
those are all uh no and uh what's the other one here lion badge and those are all like no brainers and then mush king badge and mariner badge have one boss but those are repeatable so those are pretty easy and if you're super high level you could do void badge labyrinth badge and uh, apocalypse badge in the higher level areas very very easily um but you know of course you have to be level 255 to get that last one but those are super easy they're just the monsters in the areas and that that's it no bosses no nothing so Yeah, so you're going for that third stop. But yeah, the so the the amount of we talked about that. Yeah, so general advice, just look for the ID percentage. Um you can ooh, there's a list here of like all the possible outcomes. So that's why yeah, we got the I was looking at that. So you you can use this to kind of tell like how many, you know, how many total options are there that can kind of dictate. So you see for common there's sixty options. So that does make it rather common to get your ID percent, but then for rare, there are 90 options. So even though it's a higher rarity, it's actually harder to get the ID line on a rare card. And then for Epic, it's 113. So that's, you know, your chance of getting, if you if there's like five or six lines that are really cool that you're looking for when you're going to, rare, to Epic, that means that you have like a one in 20 chance basically of getting one of those. So those rates aren't great. And for Unique, it's 133. So. But when you get to legendary, there's only 44, you know, and a lot of those are really good, but we can't get legendary in in reboot, so that's a yikes. Uh oh yeah, and this links back to the familiars to how they stack and everything. Does that all kind of make sense? Yeah, for sure. That definitely helps. Okay. Cool. Um yeah, so we'll we'll incorporate if we get to um to ID and stuff. So well since we're talking about IED, um does that all make sense, IED, like how it's calculated, why you need it, how much you need, bosses PDR, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I was checking the functional IED calculator. Mm -hmm. I think I did it right. It said I had like ninety one point eight percent. Okay, currently ninety one point eight. All right, and if you um, and if you play around, did you play around with that a little bit, seeing like, okay, what if I add, because um, the one you currently have, let's see that you, let's say that you, um, well, let me let me just remove some things and see like, uh, if I can get close to, close to that. Yeah, something like that. Um, so if you added like a familiar. For number two, right? How, what it what it would move up to? So you would be at ninety three functional. Um, basically, it's a good idea to just like add some sources, remove some sources to see, because um, this is like the backbone, right? This ID is like your backbone of can you deal damage to bosses that you have access to, basically. So you want to have a solid plan. Well, crit rate is also another thing, but you already have 100%. So later you'll go above 100, but that's like a problem for later. What level are you now, by the way? 233. 233. And what have you like already soloed and party cleared? And what are you working um, towards? I have soloed everything. I guess technically like Seville is the hardest thing that I've done. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried the revamped Galax because it was broken. Mm -hmm. um, could, you, could you be a little bit closer to the mic, by the way? Oh, sorry. Um, and then... So, like, you, so sorry, what did you say party. about Golux? Sorry, I interrupted I you. I haven't... Yeah, I haven't tried it since the revamp, because it was broken. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've done, like, party, um, Lomian. Right. Okay. So, alright, and have you done HMAG? Solo that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you tried Akechi, the new boss? Uh, I have not done it on my pathfinder i did it in a group on my kana mm -hmm. i don't really have any clue what's going on it's yeah it's kind of strange typically you just want to sit in the corner and just wait for him to do weird attacks and then just dash past him basically that seems to be <laughs> the whole boss fight um yeah once you kind of know how to cheese him a little bit he's just an 86 mil crystal per week so that is quite nice income um he's like a bit yeah, it's like in between um, HMAG and, and Lotus and Damien, basically. Um, and have you tried Chaos Papalatas? Uh, yes, I almost killed it, but I ran out of lives. Ah, unfortunate, unfortunate. And it, was it like one of your 
Like, like how many times have you attempted it? Was it like one of your first attempts or? Uh, I've tried it three times total. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have like freezers, guild skills, that kind of stuff, like those big yeah. increases. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, have you seen oh, my seep up video? Fast. On it. Uh, I have. Okay. Yeah. Did that help you at all, or is there still some situations where you feel like I can't do anything here? Um, I just, I kept getting caught with the little. Oh, the, the claws. When I was trying yeah. to block the. I was trying to block the lasers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to block on the bottom right with the low pattern? For... It was the high pattern, I think. Is mm -hmm. what it was the, the high pattern, yeah. Where the where the right one spins like super freaking fast. Right, right, yeah. The yeah. And then you um or wait the left one spins really fast, right? The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah, left the... yeah. And then you go to the right, um yeah, one of the things is is that the more you go to the right, the more Papalatus kind of like stays in the middle of the map, which makes it unsafe to block the lasers at all times. And one of the important things that you want to try to do is all whenever you don't need to be anywhere specifically in the map, then always go to his left and always try to lure him over to the left. Because the right side is where you want to block all the lasers. So the more you can lure him over to the left, the more distance he has to cover to get to you. And then hopefully by the time he gets to you, you either already block the lasers, or maybe you have a little bit more time for your iframe to come back up, which you know isn't super reliable as a uh, as a pathfinder, of course. Yeah, no, it's not great. Um, but it gives you like a little bit more time on everything, and hopefully that that stretches some of the timers out for, in your favor, um, that you can um, you can live. But yeah, the yeah the fast spinny laser, you have to. One of the things, I guess, when you, when you get more used to the timing is that you don't move over there too quickly. Um, but you do have to stand there for like two full cycles at least <laughs> because it can still hit you in the end of the last cycle where they're basically horizontal and disappear. Sometimes it still hits then and you have to stand there very long and then you have to yeah, and then a clock comes underneath you and you're like, well, I get to choose death or death. Hmm, what should I do today? Yeah, I've, uh, I've gotten that situation before too. <laughs> One thing that is possible there is that it's it, you can kind of use your bind as a pseudo iframe where if you're in that situation and, and you bind him at the right time he won't be able to summon any clocks and then at least you make sure that you can survive that stage versus using your bind for burst because it's not like you really need the bind for burst because he doesn't really move that much anyway the main thing is just that he spawns clocks while you're bursting but he also has stages where he stands still when the cogs are falling from the sky and you can kind of use that as your burst scenarios instead if that makes sense yeah i got you so that yeah ho hopefully you know <laughs> with like that different um point of view at like his mobility and and your ability to 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 kind of guide papalatus on where you want him in the map maybe that gives you a little bit of extra breathing room um, what I do different since my video is way in the beginning, I like start to his left and as soon as he summons the rifts, I go all the way to the right side of the map because I noticed that in the beginning he moves to the left and the, there's more space on the right side than there actually is on the left and the right is a little bit safer because the arms don't go all the way down. So I usually go all the way to the right, then I prep, you know, all of my skills, my bursts, whatever. And then by the time he gets to me, the, the rift is already gone and then I can approach him and then start like unloading. Um, gives you a little bit more breathing room in the beginning. That could be worth a try as well. Um, yeah, so if you can, if you could do that one and you can do a catchy, then I think you're really close to to Helix. So I would. Do um, um, you know since it changes, the coins are instanced, so you can run Helix as a party and and all get your coins. You don't have to oh. share those, so that's nice. Sick. So if you know some other people, buddy list, guild, whatever, who are in like a similar situation as you, you can just do a run with them. Uh, you'll have to, you know, come up with some kind of loot rotation for the superior if it drops, though, of course. Yeah. Is there a? Is there any like exchange for the old coins still? Yeah, so yeah. Like that that stays like indefinitely. Post. Yeah. So per every Tuesday to Wednesday, it resets, and you can buy up to ten stacks of ten um, of. of yeah, it's 10 stacks of 10, so you can exchange up to 100 coins per week. Okay. And that, that will say available indefinitely, because, I mean, <laughs> like, my arc still has 7,000 to uh, <laughs> to exchange. Oh, it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you can only 100 weeks, so that's like 70 more weeks. So it's like a year and a half more of uh, <laughs> of clicking. But, you know, we uh, we in there every week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once you could start doing Helix, of course. I don't know if you have the pieces from before. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of Helix stuff. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. But yeah, you know, for later and for backups and everything, it's a good thing to... Uh, to get going but i guess not as much pressure on it then for you in your situation most people in your situation it's really important to get you know those helix clear as soon as possible because the whole i mean basically moving for, moving through the late game is 100 percent hinging on how quickly you can get your galax equips basically um but that's good so that's that, that is already included in the in the ied then right the 30 percent there uh yes okay okay that's, okay that's good to know um uh what else is there anything else like familiars or other stuff that you just haven't um touched on in a long time you're not sure how it exactly works um so new meta for penance is transposing a mechanator onto a sweet water right yes okay yeah i got one of those the other day mm -hmm. yeah somebody somebody told me they're like yeah you're trolling because you're wearing two of those like, <laughs> oh all right well, yeah, so the thing is, if you didn't play in a while, and your current... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Did you say Mechanator? Yeah, Dominator is what they... Or mean, Dominator, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. I knew what you meant, I but yeah, we got to make sure that you, we give you the right information. Of course, the chat is like, it's a Dominator. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I have that one. Yeah. Um, it's not like griefing or something, or like trolling if you're using two superior pennants, of course. Uh, if you're an older character. It kind of depends on what Star Force they are, of course, but like my... Um, yeah, like my uh, my marksman, for example, has two um, two superiors as well. So I'm using like a five set, quote unquote, but it, you know only functions as four set. Because why would I spend a bunch of money on getting it, on flaming and on transposing and all of that stuff on Daenerys just to get a pendant that's only like one percent better or something, right? If you're yeah. planning on making a significant upgrade past it, then you want to you know upgrade it that way and then move past it and then replace it completely. Uh, but people who play back in the day and have 20 or 21 star superior pendants, like why, you know, they're not trolling because they're not using a superior, uh, a, a sweet water, right? It's like people who already have super high star tyrants. It's like, whoa, why aren't you wearing Abzo? It's like, well, I mean, it's going to cost me like 80 bill and I'm going to gain 2% final damage. Like, I'll just wait until I get arcane, right? It doesn't make sense to make that step in between. So as you move in and out of the game, there might be certain steps that you're missing and it might be really weird for someone else, but... It might make perfect sense. And it, it's kind of connected to that kind of um, fixation that people have with like best in slot and what is best in slot. But people don't realize that if you can't reach that best in slot, whatever is the next best thing could be something completely different. <laughs> and you might be almost as strong as someone else who has best in slot stuff, but your equips might look completely different and you might be almost as strong. Uh, and it might might be way easier to get. Um so yeah, it's it's good to not let other people like oh I have this thing you don't have this thing therefore you're trolling uh, <laughs> not not get to you too much because yeah yeah they're like a product of a different era so it makes sense that they would have completely different things that they're aiming for uh, but yeah we'll look at the exact numbers and see what makes sense for your uh, when your stage of the game so what is your um what does your income look like like do you make all your money with this character do you do uh, you know uh, kind of what bosses you do so. Since I've come back, I've just been mainly doing this character. Like, I have full Mesa and drop, so I'm just farming totems, mm -hmm. trying to get to 235 and up. Okay. Um, I do have a fully kitted Arcana, but I don't really play it much. Okay. Do you know about the um, change to uh, death penalty? Uh, I do not. So in KMS, with Neo, they removed experience loss upon death completely from the game. Okay. So that does yeah. mean that like suicide farming with Kana and even in the later areas, it's not like, you know, you're not suiciding 10 times a day, but you know, every now and then to stay on the level that that aspect of the game will just be axed basically. Yeah. But, uh, but it's six honestly, months from now, like next summer or so. I kept it at 230 because I wanted to keep it at Lachlan. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like in a pretty decent spot. It has like 19k stat, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know about the, um, the, and another thing that plays into all of that is like the droplets. Are you aware of all of the changes to droplets? Uh, I saw a post saying they're easier to get now and that they reduce the amount that you need for the weapon, right? It's 216 instead of 240 now. 
Yeah, so the amount of droplets you need per coin went down, and then the amount of coins you needed for some items, not the weapon, but for the other items also went down. So for a weapon, you still need 24 coins, but only 9 per... Um, or no, sorry, ni 19, right? 19 per... Mm. per. You need 12 coins, right? 12 coins and a 19 per... Something like that. Wait, am I fucking up right now? Uh, what exact numbers? It's 24 for the weapon, yeah. 24 for the weapon. And, and 12 for all the ex other pieces. Oh, yeah, no, no, 9. Yeah, yeah, no, I was right. Yeah, 24, and it used to be 10, so it used to be 240, like easy. Uh, but now it's 9 per, so you use 24 less, so it's 216. Yeah, in total. And then the other items are... What are the other items? They're... 12? Yeah, I'm in the shop right now. Yeah. 12, and those are 9 each, so that's 108 per item. Yeah, so they did that. They added droplets to the new region Cellus at 240, and to the higher areas as well, and those are all the the will droplets. So in Moonbridge, in Labyrinth, in um, Limina, they added that as a drop rate. Um, the overall increase of drop rate, yeah, that's true. And then also they increased the drop rate of Arcane Equips from a Hard Lucid and Hard Will. Um, so that set is becoming way more and more and more realistically achievable. And like the current event, they have event shops with droplets in them to speed up the process even more. Yeah, I saw that. I've been doing my dailies, but I don't think I have enough time to get the second tier to be able to buy them. Um, are you aware of the, the there's like a catch up mechanic that you can do a second tier up per day. Have you seen that? Is that the intensive training? Is that what it is? Or the supplementary one? Uh, it, so intensive training gives you extra uh, coins if you can, if you point cap for that day. And then the supplementary training gives you an extra scroll training if you already did it on that day. So that helps you. It costs extra and it doesn't give you the bamboo shoot, but it does allow you to catch up to the higher scroll. Okay. Um, so, so if I already have two check marks, should I be able to get to the second one? From today to check so you have like the training outfit the set first, the first growth potion is unlocked mm -hmm. um so you need four per box so that's like no wait four is it five five per right uh it says five yeah yeah five so ten and then the end the, the intro in the next one so you need 15 yeah so in seven days ooh, that'll be close include if uh, have you already done today or no <laughs> I have not done today. So I'll be at three of five once I finish that. Yeah, three. Uh, you'll be at three out of five if you, do, if you do double today. Okay. And then... Uh, so I would need 12 more, which is six days. Yeah. Cutting it close, but I think it's doable, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then you should be able to access the second coin. Yeah, so if you want to buy at the droplet, that's uh, five bill in total. Are you doing Maple Tour and Ursus every day as well? Uh, I have been, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, then with the bosses, with the training, with the totems, that should give you a decent uh, amount of money to be able to purchase that. Um, but that's all also a good idea, like overarching thought, like, okay, Arcane is achievable, Arcane is soon-ish. You know, that takes into account as well, like, how far do we go in upgrading your current stuff? We don't go super overboard because it's not going to be the things that you keep forever. But we do want to make it strong enough so that you can, you know, if around 250, hopefully get, like, Hard Lucid, Hard Will ready. And then you can earn some of the equips as well. So ideally, you keep everything as droplets for as long as you need to. And then once you start getting drops and you start star forcing and something goes well there then you can supplement your set with the pieces that you didn't get as drops by turning the droplets into the equips, basically. And we'll take that and into... It's just a straight upgrade on Abzo, right? I mean, it depends on how high you get it and how high your current Abzo is, but I'm assuming your current Abzo is like 17 or 18, right? Uh, 16 on most of it. 16, yeah. Then, yeah, then it'll, you know, you'll probably just get it to 17 and it'll be a straight up upgrade, yeah, for sure. It's level 200, so the bonus stats per star are way higher. The set bonus is just an upgrade of Abzo. Um, the base stats for the weapon is way higher. 
and the flames will get better because of the higher level. So yeah, it's pretty much just a straight upgrade. Um, it's way more costly one, of course, because star forcing higher level items is insanely expensive. Um, for example, like if you're going 16 to 17, you safeguard on arcane, it's 280 mil. Jesus. Yeah, so your money just <laughs> melts, <laughs> just evaporates. Um, yeah, pe remember when people were just, you know, complaining about Tyrant because it was 50 mil per attempt, but, you know. These are different times. Um, yeah, and it's way more expensive because of that, and also because there's nothing to transfer hammer into it, right? So you have to go right on the items, and they're way more time-consuming to get, so that does put them on a completely different level when it comes to upgrading. Um, okay, um, I usually look at the equips last, uh, so that I have all of the background information right to make sure that I, um, that we can dive right into that. Um, we can look at your matrix real quick. Do you use these six? Is that when you're mobbing? Those are, I mean, that's literally every single skill that I have. Mm -hmm. They're all maxed. At, they're all level 60, so... And is there any, because um, I believe that there's like a set of, God, isn't there like a set that you can make so that you can unequip two of them when you're either mobbing or bossing and then remove, uh, switch those out for uh, skill nodes instead? Yeah, the bottom two, the bottom two yeah. are the ones that I switch out because those are the mobbing skills. Right, okay, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, just making sure you have that like distinction set up because if you don't, then that's a thing we can min-max on, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The bottom two are all the mobbing skills. Okay, wait. So when you have those out, you typically don't have the bind out at the same time, right? Yeah. Um, and speed infusion. Have you have you like looked into the differences there and weighed the pros and cons for that? Um, I haven't. Um, I've been using it instead of green pots because I haven't done monster park in a hot minute. Mhm. Mm um. The way I understand it is if you... It, wait, go on, yeah. It brings me down to the soft cap. Mm-hmm. So. The way I understand it is that you you rely on your macro for pretty much all of your damage, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you're mobbing. And then that the green pot or speed infusion both don't significantly increase the amount of attacks you do with your macro held down. The only thing they do is they make all the other attacks that you do, like... Uh, perform a little bit faster so you don't get stuck as much in animation. So it tends to be more a min-maxi thing people do later on when they're bossing. But when you're mobbing, you can go without it and basically see no difference in rates. Okay. So you could replace it. Um, so let, let's say that this was your mobbing setup. I could very easily see that you would throw um, the holy symbol instead of speed infusion, for example, and take out the, the, um, uh, the bind instead of... Um, because do you have your fourth fee skill already? Um, is there a new one? Yes. In a wake, everyone got a new V skill. Cool. No, I have not done that. <laughs> <laughs> you get a um, you get it's got 140. You get a basically you get a um, a big turret that has three different forms that you can put it in. Um, one is like a shotgun basically. The other one is like a machine gun, and then the other one is three or four. Uh, the yellow ones is like spread around the map and just fires for a while. It's Is that, uh, like, worth me spending the like yeah. notes that I have saved him. It's good. Right yeah, it's good for Pathfinder, yeah. Um and then the other thing is your bird I think is not very your bird upgrade is not very useful, right? Cuz you're in tornado half the time and then uh it fills the with the levels I have right now, it fills the uh, cooldown space. So I just rotate them. You can rotate. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I use I use tornado, and then when the tornado ends, I toss big bird, and then mm -hmm. when the big bird ends, the tornado comes off cooldown. So. Okay, cool. Um, do you use vicious shot at all when you're mobbing? Uh, only for like e bosses and stuff. Yeah, only for e bosses. Okay. One thing you can look into if you have because you have the extra slot enabled. One thing you can look into if you're training for longer sessions is a skill called character building one. Uh, That's the EXP node, right? Yeah, it's a special node you can craft. Uh, you can oh, get I a lot of that. yeah. You can you can get mileage out of that if you're doing like longer training sessions, but it lasts a week, so then you can extract it at the end before it's over. Um, that could be something to squeeze in if you're planning on some you know some marathon sessions and you know. Yeah, you... I used 
I used it last week mm-hmm. when I okay. was training. So yeah, because vicious shot specifically is like good for it, it's because even elite mob, uh, elite monsters, and uh, those uh, elite champions are laughable now. So the elite monsters may stay on the map a little bit longer, but you'll kill those anyway. So I feel like vicious shot could that slot could be used a little bit better with some other stuff. But I would definitely look into your fourth V. Um, and use holy symbol and then possibly character building instead of those three skills instead instead of vicious shot speed infusion and the bind when you're mobbing but then for bossing of course um then you keep all well yeah you can pretty much keep all of those and then you switch out the bottom two that are the mobbing boost nodes right and then you switch in um probably well you want the fourth fee in there and probably the blessing since it's channel eight or the shield if you need the survivability i guess is and the uh the the blessing skill is actually like pretty good, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Scales up pretty well when you're when you're bossing together with the tornadoes. Like takes uh gives it a pretty nice burst. I guess you can take out the bird when you're bossing, right? It's not that yeah. yeah. And then focus more on the the fourth V and the and the big shield that you have, and then the the burst from the goddess. But yeah, definitely make that that new fourth V and play around with it a little bit with the different stages and see what they do. It's a pretty damn good skill. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. I'm mean, just making sure you have all your <laughs> all your skills. Yeah. If you haven't seen it with the other classes yet, like the Kana, for example, uh, you have to oh, charge. That's a mess. Have you seen that skill? <laughs> uh, yes, I have, and you've charged it and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's interesting, yeah. It's a uh, something. It's a, it's a hail mary iframe, you know, like <laughs> something. Um, any major Pathfinder questions yet? Well, we talked about the speed, uh, the speed infusion, the green pot, and the attack speed a little bit. How for mobbing, it's not very important, but it's min maxi later on. It can be useful for bossing, so you can move around. Um, you can move around. It's something. I mean, it's annoying. You could tank a lucid dragon with it. Yeah, but when you're mobbing, it's really weird to like... T- well, when you're mobbing, it's easy to stack up. When you're bossing, it's really strange. When you die, you have to restart stacking it with the boss and everything. Super min maxi. Yeah, yeah. Green plus DSI, 2% more total damage in a BA. Yeah, yeah so that, that can definitely be moved uh, Move that earlier. Um, that'll make sense for the Legion. And okay, let's get to your Legion and your links. Um, I always ask everyone just <laughs> obligatory. Have you seen the uh, the links command that I have in my channel? Uh, yeah. And do you do you like generally use that to see like what's the next character to work on? Uh, yeah. I just <laughs> I find myself having trouble like actually doing it. Okay. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you have 32 characters in there, so that's uh, that's something. But since you have 4.3, I assume a lot of those characters Most are pretty low. <laughs> Most of them are 60, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, there's got to be like something gives you a kick in the butt to be like... Uh, um, like leveling up just one a day or one every two days or something. Because the yeah, slow and steady I'm... is... Um, you know, goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my... Terra burned a Delta two ten right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice to get those uh those nodes of course. I don't know, maybe you can get some inspiration from my Legion. <laughs> you can see the member bonus pretty yeah, extensive. How so much, uh, so much stuff. It really is uh I mean you're at the at at the start now where you can really feel it starting to snowball, right? If you go on a level sixty character doesn't really feel like a level 60 character. It kind of feels like a level 120 character sometimes. Yeah. Um, one of the important things, and I don't know to which extent you're aware of this, is that one of the biggest ways that you can make new characters stronger is by pumping their critical rate. Uh, Yeah, I have a second page that I just maxed out. Mm-hmm. Like, crit rate and bonus EXP. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, what character were you training in this Legion? That's my like bossing. Okay. Do Do you know about the how how you can change the stats in the middle? 
Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, duh, I just never changed it back, that's why. Because it's, worry. yeah, it's AP, HP and Lux, I was just wondering, you know, just making sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 I definitely didn't change that back. Did you put your pieces in, a, in the shape of a P on the right side for Pathfinder? Or is that just... No, no, okay. it just didn't fit right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, is he making a statement? <laughs> it's like, hell no, yeah. It yeah, it just didn't fit right. Okay. Uh, it would be like that sometimes. Okay, so uh, do you have any like major plans with the with the Legion? Like, um, I mean, yeah, I could. The way I think about it is in one character leveling up one character from sixty to one hundred doesn't do jack shit, but leveling twenty characters from sixty to one hundred makes a huge difference. Um, yeah, it, it's power in numbers kind of thing. I kind of like got most of them to the point where like they were on the board, mm -hmm. and then I've just been like slowly like logging onto one and doing like a level or two every single time i log into it mm -hmm. yeah i prefer just getting getting it over with to 100 and then just doing zakum every day um because that's just like log in kill log out and you don't have to worry at all and you could just turn your brain off from and then get from 100 to 140 very easily um but you need to log into the character and get him to 100 first but then with fourth job, just experience is free on Zakum every day, and then there's no timer, there's no rush, there's no need for coupons that much. You just log in, kill it, log out, and then it just sets it. Then you, you know, you do that on like three or four characters, and it takes like a total of 15 minutes, and then that's just it. Um, but with that, and with slowly getting everything up to 140, you're looking at a 6k legion and a full grid board that you have access to, and at that point, your critical damage is going to start really, you know, kicking the whole game's ass. Um, and your ignore defense will allow you to roll out of IED on other stuff. I don't know if you have any on your WSE. I think you have at least one line. I don't have any. I have fake three line on every single piece. Oh, fake three. Oh, line of magic attack. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, line and of damage. damage. Yeah. And magic, magic attack. attack. Magic yeah. attack. Nice. Um, yeah, so that will allow you to just steer away from having to take IED on your WSE. By being able to f uh, fill out the um, the ID part and the critical damage part, and then once the pieces themselves all get bigger, then you can move back into the boss damage. But basically, it'll allow you to you know if you get a line of boss damage from on your secondary or on your weapon that you don't have to worry about rolling out of that. And then if you get ID somewhere, you can roll away from it, and then just move your pieces from ID in your legion to boss damage instead. And those become interchangeable at that point. But you basically want to make it so that your WSE gets more outs by having the flexibility on your Legion board to um, to respond to it, basically. But um, yeah, you do want to get that 6k Legion board to be able to do that. Um, you're already at 4.3, so that's already very good. Um, yeah, I mean, where you put all the pieces all kind of makes sense. Um, of course, it would like sort of fill out those two pieces in critical damage, but you know, some characters that still have to level... That'll fill out itself. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, just like do a little bit every day, you know, if you don't particularly like it. Or, you know, wait for there's some kind of events where disproportionately it helps low level characters and then just go ham on it. Just make sure you don't burn yourself out, I guess. Yeah. I tend to, I tend to do that. I go way too hard, way mm -hmm. too fast, and then like just end up burning myself out super hard. Mm, yeah, then definitely put some kind of fail safe on like how many hours a day do I do this? How many hours a day do I do that? Like put like an alarm for yourself or something because it can be like, oh, I'm just going to do this for a bit. And then you look at the clock and it's been four hours and you're like, oh, whoops. <laughs> um, sometimes maybe just setting an alarm so you get reminded with what time is it actually um, can help you, you know, pump the brakes a little bit easier. Um, but yeah maintain the balance right a little bit of legion a little bit of dailies a little bit of stuff that you enjoy right and just um you know, if you do some legion work which you don't enjoy then reward yourself with some other stuff that you do enjoy be it maple be it something else that way you can kind of maintain the balance and not feel like it's too <laughs> too much of a mental drain um the demon slayer 210 is going to look nice for the uh, link skill as well yeah that used to be my first main when mm -hmm. I first started playing Reboot. I see. So it has like, I think 9k stat. I just like never leveled it. Mm. Does it do CRA? 
No, I can't do that on there. Mm, okay. It's wearing like it's working broken sets, so it right. doesn't have any IED or any damage. Ah, uh, unfortunate. It was barely fifth job. Right. So it has no nodes. Oh damn. Okay. You can get that fourth V there, maybe if you get some nodes transferred. Oh yeah, I have like two hundred sitting in my storage. So. Have you seen the fourth V for Demon Slayer? I have not. Oh god, you're in for a surprise. I don't. I don't. I don't want even want to spoil it. I just want you to. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to go into like the, um, the Inferno Wolf, and then just press it and hold it down and just, see the glory unfold. <laughs> it's uh, it's marvelous. <laughs> Spoiler there. Yeah. Um, yeah, not no, not spoiling it. You can <laughs> you can get I'll the full to, experience. I'll have to do that after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's beautiful. Make sure you have targets to hit, though. But, uh, yeah. Like, it doesn't really do anything if you just use it in the air, of course. Um, okay, so this is your bossing setup for your Lynx? Yep. Um, okay, you don't want that Night Watch. Yeah, you don't want to get knocked around. You have an IED from Bravado. Um, are you aware that we have zero now on Reboot? Yes, I started doing the campaign on it. Good, okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. That link skill is like 100% necessary, right? I mean, it's... The links... Oh, the, the Legion board, yeah. The link skill, not that much, no. Um, again, like if you're more reliant on the IED because either you don't have a line yet on your weapon, you don't have the second familiar yet, you know, your Legion isn't big enough to yada yada yada, you know? Um, at that point, it can be it can be a necessary thing to get you to the point where you don't, um, you know, you can still get a functional IED of like 93 and higher. Um, but then once those other sources start coming in, eventually the only IED uh, link you want uh, is the the Lumi one at uh, if it's level three, like at 20%. That's the most valuable one. Um, generally, the other ones are not used. For some classes, there may be exception, but generally the other ones are not used because the other link skills can provide you with more damage than the ID can. Um, compared to the trade-off of getting ID from other sources and how much damage uh, they go at the expense there. But we'll look at like other sources for ID a little bit later. Um, uh, so you have Iron Will, Cygnus Blessing, and Close Call here. Um, those uh, are like... Put, yeah? I put Close Call on because I was relearning the boss fights and I was messing around in like, mm -hmm. Lotus. Sure. Yeah, with the the hitbox in the middle of the dash and you gotta like hit the middle or the end through the laser and shit. Yeah. <laughs> that can be... Very tricky. <laughs> Did you get the hang of that again? Uh, yeah, loosely. I can do it like 50% of the time now. Hmm, that doesn't seem too reliable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe keep doing that. Um, Iron Will in general is kind of eh, because all of the bosses do percentage HP damage. So if you give yourself more HP, you'll just take more damage proportionally. So that really doesn't do much. Um, That's true. HP so, is pretty useless now, right? With all the like arcane force and everything, anyways. Yeah, it gives a little bit of damage to Kana and to, and of course it's a main link skill for Demon Avenger. But other than that, sometimes people use it on if they're on a squishy character that you try, so you don't you know get absolutely dumpstered early on. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty useless link skill. Yeah. Um, so there are some other links that would be really good to implement. Um, for example, the Kinesis Link gives you critical damage. That's a very solid one. Um, the Kadena Link gives you extra damage if you're higher level than the boss and if they are debuffed, which you do a lot of. So that is also a very nice one to use. Um, Hybrid Logic is probably you wanna, one you want to roll out of eventually, especially if it's level 1. Um, if you can replace it with something like the Beast Tamer Link. Do you have a Beast Tamer? Uh, I just made one. You just yeah, made one, yeah. They were unavailable for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they were out of commission, yeah. Um, critical rate and boss damage there, so that's nice for you. Um, and you do want to keep pushing that critical rate, so definitely eventually also get the Phantom at least to, to level 2 link. Um, because of... Um, Fish's shot, right? Um, that also does mean that eventually in the hyperstats, because I said you have a critical rate pretty low there, eventually you just add to the hyperstat critical rate as well once your 
I think it's damage also hits level 10. Because I, th I think that one is at 8 now, right? Uh, yes. If I remember correctly. Yeah, and then eventually you just add into critical rate as well. Because during your burst, it'll add critical damage. And then, you know, your burst is um, not as significant compared to your off burst like with other classes. But still, with Vicious Shot, with the Tornado, um, with your new 4th V, um, it is still, uh, you know, quite a bunch. So the more critical rate you have there, the harder that'll hit. Um, with that said, definitely fo focus on Vicious Shot if you're going to be leveling any skills up. Uh, for skill nodes, I'd definitely focus Vicious Shot over the other ones because the percentage, um, you know, of your critical rate that goes into critical damage is, is so significant as it levels up. It goes up to 50%. So if you get your total crit rate to like 150, then you add 75% critical damage, which is very significant. Pretty insane, actually. Yep. Yeah, it, it starts pretty low, right? It starts at like 10% or something. I think my thing is like 30% right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah because it gets that percentage increase, that makes it a, a priority target for uh, for your bursting. Um, yeah, but definitely some, some stuff I would move around uh, when it comes to uh, the link skills. Does it all make sense? The priority is there? Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, we do want to keep the ID in mind because we know you have level 2 Light Wash and level 2 Bravado. And you don't have a line on your WSE, but you do have here. So we want to make sure that we don't like cut any ID somewhere without replacing it at least with something else, right? That's as good or better. Uh, but we are thinking of, of getting that familiar in there. Um, that will get you to 93 for now, which is like at least where you would want to be. A lot of people do rely on at least one line of ID on your their WSC for a while, um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we are working with exactly. Um, links Legion that all makes sense. Mobbing you're adding the zero. Uh, no, no, the zeros for the board. Never mind. It's not a link skill. Um, you have the Evan Aaron uh, Mercedes. You have the trifecta. They're done? all level two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Uh, okay, any questions with uh, Matrix, Legion, Lynx? Uh, I think I've got a pretty decent hold on it. Okay, cool. Um, then we can get to the actual equips. Um, so yeah, if you had two line attack, then you keep that, of course. You don't, didn't stumble into any IED, which is fine. Uh, flame on a weapon is fine. I put the calculator, mm -hmm. but it kept telling me that like it didn't actually fit for the values that I had. I think it's a tier 6, but I'm not sure. Oh, there could be a rounding error, yeah, because it deals with percentages. So sometimes it um sometimes the rounding is a little bit imperfect. Like it'll sometimes just round up when it's at 0.4 or something cuz you know, maple story. Um What is it in the 192 192 base? Oh, it says here tier 6 should be 77. Is that what I have? It is, right? Yeah. It's possible. Did you have flame advantage ticked for the weapon? It's possible I if you... I have. Because if you don't untick it, there's a 71 there. I think that's what happened, yeah. Yeah, if you yeah if you do flame advantage, weapon level 160, 199, and base of 192, uh, it does have the 77. So, yeah, so that's tier 6. So uh, flame advantage is boss, boss drops, right? Um, or yeah, so it used, we used to call it like boss flames, we used to call it KMS flames, but then basically what we, the re realization we came to is, well, you know, but some items drop from bosses or existing KMS, but don't have these flames, so it, it can be confusing. What we initially want, what, what we ultimately want to express is, can this weapon get better flames than other items or not? So we call that flame advantage. Does this item have flame advantage? Um... Yeah, and all like the significant things that happen that exist in KMS and that draw from bosses, those usually uh, apply to that. Um, if you check my flame video, I basically talk about some some tick uh, some tips that you can use. There's like a database somewhere of all the items that exist that are flame advantage. So if you can just find the item on the list, then you know for sure. The other way to tell it is that when you use a flame on it, it'll be two tiers lower. 
both on the lower end and in the upper end if the item does not have flame advantage plus the amount of lines of stats you get is anywhere from one to four if it doesn't have flame advantage and if it has flame advantage it's always four so that's a big way that you can tell just by looking at an item and looking at the numbers and how many numbers there are if an item has flame advantage or not like just one glance at your superior pennant for example and you see 12 16 12 and then that's it like this cannot have flame advantage it's just impossible it can never have that outcome right the other pen is like 32 decks and one speed. Like speed can't even go that low on a flame advantage item. Like the lowest possible is three. So the fact that it has a one is already immediately a giveaway that it is a non-flame advantage item. Yeah, those things uh, don't give great flames. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, that's... Um, that's why initially we said KMS, non-KMS, because a lot of the items that don't exist in KMS are the ones that struggle <laughs> very hard mm -hmm. to uh, to getting that. And then you see for the abs, oh, you see those huge numbers. It's like, well, that's clearly flame advantage, right? Always four lines. Mm -hmm. Four lines is a little bit deceptive because you can have a line of strength, a line of dex, and then one line could be shared strength dex, for example, and then you have three lines, but it'll only show you two numbers. But then you can kind of tell by the numbers being larger numbers than, than usual. Yeah. It's kind of the idea. Like with your cape, right? You see 36 and then 79, 79. Well, that's a strength line, a dex line, an intellect line, and then a dex and intellect line. Um, but we don't really want to dig into like which lines are, is it exactly and which tiers of all the lines is it exactly. So that's why we use the flame score instead because the flame score could just like, kind of like equalize everything in how much main stat is this worth basically. And then after that, it also looks at not how good is the flame right now, but how good will the flame be? Yo, thanks for rating, dude. Uh, how good will the flame be once all of your stats kind of settle into the normal state? with your upgrading, uh, you know, with mm -hmm. kind of like equal fair upgrading over everything when it comes to flaming potential and star forcing. I've used the, the flame calculator for some other stuff to see like where uh, everything is at. Yes. I think most things fell into the, like on the progression list, most mm -hmm. things fell into the, the proper category for where I am at stat wise and stuff. Mm -hmm. Glove is probably falling um, a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty decent flame, but the potential makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I rolled that, dude. I bought two packs of black cubes to tear this thing up from Unique, because I had it on three-line decks Unique. Mm -hmm. First cube, tear up three-line decks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at that point, you just cube other things first, but the critical damage line is very strong. The bad thing is that it makes your range go down, right? So yeah. you feel weaker, but you just have to, like... I know how the numbers work, you know, I know that I'm actually stronger, game, you're lying to me, but yeah, it, it would feel bad to roll out of that, especially if you get it on your first cube on the tier up, yeah. I just didn't have enough money to, like, reasonably go for mm -hmm. crit and stat. Yeah, so we would go crit and stat, um, crit and, um, crit and decent sharp eyes for other classes, of course, is also really popular, or, you know, double line crit is the the ideal, right, with mass black cubing. Um, I've also heard auto steal. I don't know what that is. Yeah, we can get into that if you want. So auto steal does exist on higher tier familiars as well. So that's a thing you can use uh, to supplementary get a little bit more money. Um, and auto steal does also exist on gloves, but only if you use Meister cubes. Mm. They still have the old, um, line outcomes basically what auto steel does is it gives you a chance when you kill when you hit a monster or kill it kill it also counts as one hit uh gives you a chance to get a drop from the monster that would have also dropped when they died basically so essentially it doesn't really do that much because you just get the drop you could just get a little bit sooner the one major application though is that you can get a part of the money that the monster would drop early on uh, a bag if you kill the monster uh, without detracting from how much money it drops eventually. So if you're farming or training and you don't need the damage from the item to be able to one shot or kill, or you know, your kill speed doesn't go down by switching, you can increase your mezzo rates. Um, we looked it up yesterday, you gain a quarter of a percentage of your total uh, hourly rates per percentage of auto steal roughly. So if you get like 7% auto steal, that's like almost like 1.75% more total gains than what no, you get. So it's not really worth it. 
It's not huge, but it is, you know, if you're having a farming character and you're going to do it for longer periods of time, it, it, it can definitely become worth it. If you get a familiar with, I think you can get a glove with like 9% or something in not too much trouble, hopefully. Um, and if you can get something on a familiar and you get like 12% extra, that could be like 3% overall me meso increase. It's not insane, yeah. You go from like 1 billion, <laughs> let's say you have a... a well, let's take a more realistic number. Let's say you have like 800 mil an hour or something with like full buffs. Um, you go from 800 to, uh, what is it, 3, would it be 3%? Yeah, so like 802.4. So it's not that much over an hour, but you know, over 10 hours, it's 25 mil. Over 100 hours, yeah. it's 250 mil. Um, some people farm for literal thousands of hours. So, you know, if it increases your rates and it doesn't detract from your kill speed, then... It's gain, but yeah, it's a pretty niche thing for sure. Uh, yeah, but we'll definitely, you know, even you know about the gloves, you know about critical damage, you know how good it is. So that is something to. Um I think the thing that's hurting me right now is I don't have extra equips for like my accessories. I only have one set right now. So like my my Sweetwater stuff is like only drop gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and you're looking for kind of like how to move to the next step that way. Yeah. So I just get an extra like set, right? Like ideally. Yeah. Um. So the thing with the accessories, uh, with the Iron Face specifically, is just double up because if you start cubing, and you get um you know, something that's even better than what you currently have, but it's dropped, then you can just switch their positions and then just do the other one, right? That's the ideal, because we don't have trade and you don't want to have to roll over something that could be better. Like, let's say you drop, you roll item drop and two lines of decks or something. Well, then you keep that one and then you roll the other one you have and you roll that one for, for damage, basically. Um, if you roll item and mezzo and whatever shit third line then you can you keep that instead and then just switch their their functions you'll take a little bit of a hit in star force but between like 12 and 16 there's not the hugest difference just yet it's you know it's worse when you're at like a 20 or 21 star item and then you roll double dr drop on that that's a little bit more of a of a yikes but um yeah so you can just switch for the eye in the face that's pretty straightforward um where's the picture with all your uh because i need like a visually yeah, this. Um, yeah, basically with ring-wise, you'll pop into other rings, and then these will end up just getting re-rolled for mezzo for drop, but a lot of them already have mezzo and drop, right? Uh, pretty much everything. The only one that doesn't have, like, a line of drop is of the synergy ring right now, and then the superior that's 16 stars with 21%. Yeah, because it had three line on decks. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... D I figure you... that's only really worth recubing, right? If I'm going for like 27 plus. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, just keep, to keep it nice and unique. Some people have a big problem with having one item still be yellow and everything else being green, but <laughs> that's like a personal thing, I guess. Um, yeah, the pen. So one thing is that the pendants. You know, if you do end up finding a nice dominator, uh, or like you know, getting the dominator flame to the level and getting it to 16 stars, and you manage to transpose and switch out, then you can just you, you simply use one of your current pendants for drop or mezzo instead since it's already legendary the other one people some people use greed pendants some people use um you know because it gives you a little bit of uh, equip drop rate um helps you finding more for more symbols i have a 24 percent uh superior right now and then i have one that's 20 and 18 like 20 percent meso 18 decks mm -hmm. yeah so Ideally, just keep that one for farming, right? And switch it out for... Yep, for sure. You, yeah, just, you switch the other one out with something like a Greed Pendant if it doesn't drop your damage too much because it has that built-in 20 item drop rate uh, or equip drop rate, I should say. Still don't know how that works exactly because no one really knows if equip drop rate exists in the code or if it just functions as an item drop rate line. No one is 100% sure on that. We have some data mining people go into that. Um... But um, so, so that would like pendant wise already set you in place, and then you switch out the 
you know the the mezzo one with the damage one that you have now and then switch the green pendant out with with it with either just the dominator as it is before you transpose it because it'll still work for the set bonus at that point right it'll give you the three set bonus together with your cup and your badge so that does kind of close the gap um but if that's weaker than your current uh, dominator then you, uh, sorry then your current second superior then you just use that instead whichever one is better uh, it'll depend on how far it got already uh, and then once it's transposed, start forcing that past will take play uh, take your spot as a the secondary damaging pendant. Um, so for for transposing, typically you look for sixteen stars, and then for flame score between one hundred and five and one hundred and fifteen. Uh, that's a that's a pretty high uh, thing to aim for because once you transpose, you can switch the flame anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, some people just yeah. Just tr aim for that, and then they end up. Some people end up settling for like a very high 90s or like low 100s, um, just below the 105 mark. But it, it, yeah, it's totally depending on, on you, on how long it's taking you, whether you just like fuck it and I just want to send it, I just want to upgrade, or um, you know, if you're very min max, it just depends on that basically. Uh, and we did have Madman Remaru doesn't drop nearly the flames anymore that he used to like near zero at this point so the income for flames especially for people who relied on that very heavily is a lot lower now so that might slow down that process something I too i don't think i've seen a i don't think i've seen a tier seven or a boss flame like at all since i've come back um no like i think i've gotten one or two powerful ones from remaru and that's about it um <laughs> the eternals seem completely gone there sadly so, yeah, that does slow down the process. But at least we have Eternals in the event shop for only 250 mil each, so... <laughs> um, don't buy those, by the way. <laughs> what a steal. Yeah, you can buy 25 Powerfuls or one Eternal. Hmm, what to get? Um, I have dumped yeah. so much money into the Holy Cup, and the best flame I've seen is a 60 stat 5 attack. Yeah, that's not horrible. I mean, the five attack does make make up for quite a bit. Mm. Yeah, big holy cup is um. Do you do you do like the thing with you where you fuse the extra cups? Yeah, I saw you doing that a long time ago, and so I've been doing it. Mhm. Mm but yeah, no dice on that. No, nothing. Oh. I've got a. It was like an eighty-five and six strength one. Mm, nice. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. Very, very useful. Strength is free. <laughs> Strength is free. Dex is uh Dex is hard. Um Yeah, I mean yeah, just keep trying. <laughs> There's nothing more to really say there, like yeah. Yeah. Keep fusing. Uh definitely higher priority in the flames of your Abzo stuff, right? The 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 potential gains there are always significant. Um Ideally you get it all on the level of your glove, but it's not, you know, super realistic at this point, most likely. Um, so, like, yeah. spending priority for me right now, mm -hmm. I mean, do you think it'd be most beneficial to, like, work on flames then? So, um, yes, priority-wise. Let's make, like, a mental list and you can write it down. Um, so, when it comes to mezzo and drop, what's your current percentages that you have at this point? Um, I am 160 100 meso 60 drop okay all right and that's that's divided over eight equips right uh yeah i'm only missing it on one pendant missing on one pendant and then wait so you have two extra rings then uh yeah dude my rings are a mess um <laughs> all my damage rings have meso on them mm -hmm. um i have drop meso 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 I have Meso on the pendant, and then drop on both the uh, face and eye, and then Meso on the earrings. Okay, yeah, so we have the Reinforced 17, Kana Treasure. Um, yeah, have, have you th have you thought about, like, the um, if we're talking about upgrading as well, um, so, so one equip, one pendant for line, okay. And then have you thought about the 15 and the 17 star scroll? Have you used either of these? 
Um, well, the 15. I don't have access to them right now. Oh yeah, you're not gonna get the 15, right? Because it's too too high up. Yeah. And probably not the 17 either, because you had, don't have enough days to get there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, that's good to know. Not to like <laughs> put salt into the open wood. <laughs> Just wanted to no, make no, sure. It's all good. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to, be more yeah, exactly. Didn't want to pull the focus towards the things that you can't get, but just make sure that we eliminate those as, as options so we move on, not dwelling on that. Okay, so you have... Okay, so you're using two rings that ideally would become like your damaging rings in the reinforcement of the Kana treasure. But the thing is, if you get those to 17 versus the full event ring, um, they're, they're better, right? Like the Kana treasure and the, and the reinforced... But it's not like out of this world better where you have to move over because otherwise you're... Because like it's 30 stat and 2 attack. There's definitely something, but it's not, you know, game-breakingly something. Um, yeah, because ideally you just... you did, When the rings are kind of close, you just end up cubing them all and then seeing whatever gets what, it becomes that function. Kind of like what happened to the synergy ring. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the superior can stay that for sure for now. Yeah, in fact, it reinforces 15 next plus a line of drop. That's like that's a good hybrid ring for now. Um, and these are your strings. Yeah, strongest rings like this. Yeah, and then you switch out the synergy and the superior for the vengeful and the SS ring. Yeah. And the SS, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's honestly not bad. It's honestly not bad. So once you're, yeah, once everything is kind of like at seventeen, um, that's when stuff like the transposing comes in. So like the, you know, dominator into the sweet water. And then the other stuff that also starts coming in is like Meister ring crafting and getting into all of those shenanigans. How are you with materials for that? Um, I don't know exactly what I need. I haven't really looked into that. Okay, uh, you need primal essence. That's a hard one to get. Drops from big rocks, big flowers, and from normal arc. Uh, I have a total of one. Okay. Um, ideally you want at least like three or maybe four before you start crafting. So you need to get your accessory crafting all the way up to 12. Uh, I have an exclamation mark Meister video that talks about, you know, what kind of stuff you want to make to, to get there. Uh, but once you go past level 10, basically, if you don't craft something regularly, it'll start degrading your experience. So the sooner you start, the more materials you'll have to keep using to stay at that rank. So ideally you want to wait until you have, you know, enough materials to at least make a few rings. Um, and then, you know, once you have those, then it can degrade again, whatever, and then you'll just level it up back later once you do another big session or something. Um, yeah. They also cost Grand Spell Essences, which can be kind of a bottleneck. Um, I have 600 of them. Mm -hmm, that's pretty good. Um, well, it, it doesn't require recipes, so you can actually open it up. If you open up the, uh, the crafting menu and go to Accessory Crafting... And then go to rings and scroll down, and you'll find there's one item there with a Meister icon with an M. And then you can see the materials right there. Yeah, I have level 10 accessory crafting. Mm -hmm. So I just have to work towards that, I guess. Yeah, so you see 800 twists of time, uh, 35 philosopher stones. The mana crystals are, of course, trivial. 150 grand spell essences and one primal essence to craft one. Yeah, I think the primals are going to be the only issue. Yeah, the thing is, you know, if you could just get lucky with one primal, immediately you need access to 150 extra grand spell essences, right? So that order uh, is like a big uh, multiplier there. But if you have 600, then, you know, you're already on track to be able to make four. So it's mainly primals. But yeah, if if you... I think you were doing it, right? Because you got your dominator, but like daily um, normal arc on as many characters that can kill him as possible is just very good for your general progression. Um, he can drop wealth and experience accumulation potions as well at a low rate. Um, he drops rocks of time, which NPC, he has a 7 mil crystal. Uh, he can drop confusion fragments as well. Um, and the primal, primals, like, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good income boss if you can yeah. kill him with a few characters. I have here, I'll toss this in. 
I don't know if you wanted to look at this, but this is all the stuff that I have in my storage currently. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, the juniper. Do, do you know about like the wealth acquisition potion, experience accumulation okay. potion, the crafting? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what you want the juniper for, right? That's why it's good to always harvest the flowers for this and and the chance of primals, and then always harvest the rocks as well for the chance of the primals. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. It's good to know. So you already have 77 droplets? You, you didn't buy any out from this shop yet, right? No, this is just from farming. Okay. Okay, that's good shit. Yeah, ideally, in, in the past it was just like, make your weapon, get your weapon ASAP. But now, of course, ideally people don't want to make their... <coughs> excuse me. Make their weapon anymore because it's so expensive. <coughs> Another one. Um, and then ideally just, you know, get a drop, uh, weapon drop, and then use the droplets to make the equips themselves. Because, you know, if you get one drop and it's a weapon, then you can use the same droplets to make two two items, basically. So, it scales way better that way. Um, but of course, weapon is more expensive because <laughs> the base stats are insane. Um, I, I don't know, um, at my current, like gear level i don't think i'm strong enough to do like party lucid yet i'm not sure though um once you get to like well you can solo lotus and damien are you close to that i i haven't tried you haven't tried um well once you get cpap done more reliably you can do akechi and you can do um halux then lotus and damien solo should be like the next like step that's doable. Um, and then, as long as you stay on track after that, I think you can start joining Lucid Parties. Um, yeah, like, but stuff like Hard Lucid and Hard Will, of course, is, is a huge step up from that. And it will be like closer to 250. And then we'll definitely have to get a, a round of uh, upgrade equipment going to get to that point. But that, that's yeah, like I think the general. I have a lot of a lot of stats I gained from Arcane Force too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Level ups, uh, Arcane Power, especially early on, um, is huge. Yep. Humongous. Um, but your nodes, you know, your boost nodes being maxed, that's already, that's already super helpful. <laughs> but then if you add in Arcane Power, that's gonna, yeah, every new area you're just gonna destroy. Um, yeah, so, okay. So set wise for your drop, yeah, for drop and meso set split up. Um, you don't have a, yeah, your earring is not dedicated, right? No, it's yeah, my is superior it, earring, but but it's just both. I, yeah, I have a reinforced one that I'm slowly gonna start working towards. Okay. I mean, I can technically right get another superior earring now. Mhm. Mm so I, so I could probably just go buy that honestly um you could the thing is um if you're not gonna have the full set on um you don't lose that much stat so typically um drop equips even if they have um the ability to get stars so we're talking about non-rings basically um you don't really want to start for them too high up which also means that if the base stats are a bit lower than your current ones, you don't really lose that much stat compared to it being a superior versus it being reinforced. The one thing you can lose out on that can be somewhat significant is the set bonus. Um, so it's kind of up to you to see like in your set how many pieces stay um, afloat and does is it worth like going for the set bonus and paying that 700 to get another you know, to get another earring, or do you wait until you get one as a drop? Because they can drop from Helix. Uh, or you, do you just take a reinforced for now? Um, yeah, and then maybe switch up later or something like that. Depending on what you end up with, right? Let's say you end up with Mesoptine on the on the reinforced or something. Yeah, is um. So I know I missed the uh, 
the one droid event, but mm -hmm. is it worth me getting like just a throwaway heart that has like five um, or whatever for instead? Nah, I'd say no. Like if you really care about the access to the android, you can you can get a heart for it, but um, there is one right now in the in the shop, right, where you can get the lithium heart, but it's level thirty. Uh, that one is permanent. If you care about the the Android shop very much and having access to that, if that makes your life a whole lot easier, you can do that. Um, but typically, I don't advise um, investing into the temporary hearts or the lower level hearts much whatsoever. No, I don't think it is a good sound investment at this point. There's like a lot of other stuff that needs your money. <laughs> yeah, true. Um. Yeah, okay, so what can we do specifically for the um, accessory set? So Iron Face, we talked about, that one's clear, right? Uh, Pendant-wise, that's clear? Yep. Um, Earring-wise, um, what's your current reinforced looking like? Uh, it is 12 stars, and it has epic potential. Uh-huh. That's right, right. Mm. Um, and you would end up with uh, set wise one spear uh, and a belt, but the ring gets replaced as well. So you, yeah. So you could keep the three set if you do a superior, but what is that like thirty attack? Uh, three set is thirty-five. Attack. Thirty-five, yeah. I mean that is something. Um. But you don't have an, a secondary superior right now, I assume. Uh, no, I do not have enough for it. Hmm. Okay. You could focus on the other pieces, you know, first while you get into Halex more. And if you do get a superior ear, uh, earring secondary, then you work mainly on the Star Force or your current, or current reinforced, and then transfer him right over. And then you can basically treat them the same way you do your iron face right because then if you happen to roll three line decks on the other one you just switch them over and then this one just stays your drop but if the other one gets like a double line of drop and mezzo or something then this one becomes your damage and you can roll it for full damage if you want later um or right now you just use it as is because it's still 16 and comparative to everything it's still uh 18 right uh it's still comparative to everything it's still pretty good uh, but accessories also comparatively have lower junk lines so Initially, if you're you know, trying to make the jump to two and a half lines of stat, like 24 or 27, um, or higher, of course, if you're lucky, um, the accessories are like the first place to, to go looking for that. So you could uh, spend a little bit on star forcing on reinforce for now, and then while you work more on the second iron face and the, and the pendants, and if you, you know, in that process, get another superior earring, then you can switch over, and if you don't, then just use the reinforced, basically. Um, ring wise, you're ring wise, you're on track. But yeah, once the meisters start coming in, I think you would pretty much just keep using what you're using now. Ring wise, I think that's fine. Um, once the meister comes in, you have to make some decisions. Do you just want to make a 17 star meister and just throw it into the bunch of rings, or are you gonna risk on the meister ring to go higher, um, and then use it as is, as a stronger damage ring, or transfer over into the superior so that the superior gets settled into higher stars. And then redo the potential because you know eventually you want to get it to legendary and redo the potential. If you can com combine that with transfer hammering over and resetting the potential, that would be ideal because then you don't have to reroll it twice. Uh, but yeah, we'll do at least three, maybe four primals uh, that you have, so you can get some backup rings. Uh, because ideally, those don't really come into play until you're starting to like gamble past seventeen, basically. Um. Yeah, I think that's yeah, and you can get the current event ring. Neo is gonna have um, ring coupons, five per account, that allow you to buy any of the strongest event rings from the last three um, things. So like the glory, the rise, or the awake ring, fully upgraded. Um, that won't be very useful for this character, but could be for other characters. Uh, your kind is probably already decked out as well, so not for that one, but for other characters that you're like starting and you want to get one or two rings there um will be a lot of free stat early on yeah i was thinking about putting a 
bit of money into the Adele. I actually really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's so. like a warrior Pathfinder kind of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, or like a mage. Definitely... On a, I don't know if it's quite a warrior because it always felt very magical with like flying swords and stuff, but you know. Um, okay, um, yeah, symbol dailies, uh, if you do have coins currently, uh, near the end of the event, so the, the, sh the events and everything stays up until the end of the 26th, and then the shops stay up until the end of the 31st, um, so anything you could do focusing on getting more points, uh, more coins, so that you can, um, buy more stuff from the event, the nodes are not as necessary for you, but like the symbols, um, you're probably behind a little bit more because of the breaks you took, right? Um, so once you get, uh, you were 233, you said? Yeah, I just hit 233. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you can, so Morass and Asphara still only have one daily. You know, all the other areas have two dailies each, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, disproportionately boosting Asphara, not only because it's the last one you access, but also because you can only get eight a day max, uh, throwing any kind of, uh, symbol, uh, coupons you have into that one is, is paramount to just... The early boost for your arcane power and also just being done with these shitters because <laughs> it takes forever. Um, and the sooner you can participate in events and just max those out, that's a whole... Uh, yeah, just load off your chest, basically. So that's... Um, always look out for events to be able to do that. Max level is 20 or 25? Uh, 20, yeah. I don't think they're ever going to pull that up. They came with... Um, so the new areas have something called authentic power. Yeah, Which, I saw that. Yeah, so that's going to be the new thing. But it seems like the curve there to lev the level, the max level, I think, is only level ten or eleven. Um, but the curve to level up there is way steeper there, so um, it'll take way longer to get them to that level. But you also, I think, you get one hundred and fifty or even two hundred per level, so it it does give you way more stat. So you know, more for this, less of that kind of thing. But yeah, that's level two sixty plus, so. Um, I mean, yeah, if you keep playing, you might get there. Um, we still have six months, so. That's, this is all coming with the summer update? Yeah, it's all Neo summer update, yeah. Okay, cool. And then the level, so there's like a 260 area, and it has like a shadow version of the area that's like on fire, that's 265. And then there should be level 270 area coming out soon, called Hotel Arcus, uh, with the uh, the new boss, Chosen Saren. That's the one from the, the previous storyline, like the angel character mm -hmm. who uh, basically got seduced by um by darmur lore spoiler guys uh <laughs> by darmur to like uh help him get the uh get some kind of crystal and then he basically just absorbed that crystal and became darmur kind of thing so he's so sarin is basically in the same situation as uh as lucid right where they kind of got like tempted by the wrong person and then ended up fighting for the wrong side kind of thing um, yeah, okay, so we talked about what bosses to do, uh, dailies to do, you're, you're still doing Monster Park, right? Uh, I'm starting to do it again, yeah. Okay, yeah, because the 10 IED there is also going to be super valuable for your overall, uh, it's one of the best sources of IED that you can get that doesn't go at the, um, at the cost of much other damage, so that's definitely a, a thing to work on. Um... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't, you can't get by with not needing a line of ID and all the other stuff. It does mean that it's oh, everything else is a bit more stress. And you definitely do need to put it into your legion as much as possible. But if you slowly keep creeping your legion up, uh, work on those accessories we talked about. Um, I think your flames are fine. That's not like a super priority. Um, I wouldn't really spend on flames at all until everything is 17 and like... You know, tw 21 to 24 on the level 150 stuff, and the level 160 plus stuff is at least like 24, 27. Unle until then, I wouldn't really spend on flames at all. Um, and then the only thing I would spend on at that point is if you get um, somehow get like an arcane weapon or something, then I would spend on that. Um, if there's a dominator that you want to start transposing, I would spend on that. Or if you get a Paplaus mark drop, then you want to transpose it into a Sweetwater uh, monocle. Like, those are the only things I would spend flames on. The other stuff I would just, like, organically get through getting flames from bosses. Um, yeah, the side thing is... Um, 
some supplementary income could come from doing extra bosses on some of your secondary tertiary characters. Uh, like the Adele and the Demon Slayer, I think if you get them to 210, should be candidates to look at doing normal arc and maybe weekly CRA with. Yeah, I because think they have yeah. they have very good fourth job kits. Uh, sorry, fifth job kits. Yeah. So if you get into two ten, both of those, um, with some base level of funding, some nodes, they they should be able to do that. Um, yeah, and that ties into like longer term stuff when it comes to like souls, right? If you do normal queen, normal Valum, normal Magnus regularly. Um, you can build up the amount of total souls you have because this Sunday we have a Magnificent Soul event and then you know when you have the Magnificent Souls it's transferable so then if you have more characters working on that progress at the same time you can increase the amount of um, possible Magnificent Souls you get access to by quite a bit. I did not know that they were transferable. That's cool. Good to yeah. Know. So usually Magnificent is 1% chance and then during a Magnificent during a soul event, it's 5% chance, which is, you know, significantly better, but still horrible. Um, and then the Magnificent ones have the random stats when you apply them, but they, they are not time limited and they can be transferred. And then the non-Magnificent ones are time limited and cannot be transferred. So they're kind of, yeah, just dead weight, <laughs> basically. You can throw them in the book um, for shits and giggles, um, or if it's, a you know, some normal souls are okay to use, but most of them are just, yeah, throw away. Um, yeah, that's that's why like upscaling the amount of characters that can do that bosses is is a uh, is valuable. That and you know you get a little bit of cubes, a little bit of flames as well, so that speeds up the process on that on that as well to fund some other characters or to fund themselves to you know be able to do those bosses that they have access to but maybe struggle a little bit with to make that just a little bit easier over time. Because it does feel good to <laughs> to generally progress with everything. You don't want to constantly stay in your little. Uh, you know, you don't want to have the training wheels on at all times. You want to be able to do the things a little bit faster as time progresses. Yeah. That'll, yeah, that'll mainly hinge on if you also do some symbol dailies on those characters, I guess. Or maybe do them at least until you have like level 5 or 6 or 7 uh, symbol where it still levels pretty quickly. Because that's just like a free 1,000, 2,000 stat just from leveling those two symbols up if you have 110 and access to Fenching Journey and Choo Choo. They level so fast. Yeah, Choo Choo's. Yeah, yeah, it's like 19 a day. First three days is three levels, I believe, or like close to it, so. Yeah, that's pretty fast. I mean, yeah, might be a little bit harder to do hard Mudo Im immediately, but hungry, hard, 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 hungry Mudo immediately, but, you know, guild uh, or people in the chat you can ask or, you know, buddy list. That should be very doable. Um, yeah, but all the other stuff is, honestly, your stuff is pretty well balanced, like the level of the flames, level of the star force, level of the of the potential, it's all very well balanced. So that's good to see. There's nothing like super out of whack. It's just like the the potential in the glove is unfortunate, but you know, what are you gonna do about that? Yeah, you know, uh, com comparative to everything else, it makes sense that you hold on to that. Cape is very nice, uh, but the glove flame makes up for it. Um, yeah, I guess the next step would be to, we definitely roll into crit damage on the gloves and then um, finalize all of those potential lines that we talked about and then get majorly into the transposing, ring crafting, and then, and then the joy of going past 17 commences. <laughs> um, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> looking forward to blowing up every single thing I own. Yeah. Spell the, yeah. Item traces are beautiful things. In, uh, in other people's inventories mainly, not in your own, but yeah. <laughs> now hopefully you don't, yeah. Just, yeah, weigh the risks, right? If, if you're okay with something blowing up, if you have backups, then, you know, risk it. If you're not okay with it, don't risk it. It's pretty simple. Uh, don't go too hard on Abzo. Those pieces get switched out by Arcane, and that's more and more and more achievable. Um, I think it's probably smart and, you know, risk weighing probably worth to get your abso up to 18 that's a pretty low risk and still a pretty significant gain because it's 160 but primarily aim for higher star force on things that you can replace more easily uh, such as you know getting a bunch of the narrows for the accessories getting those higher up uh, lower tier accessories you know that you can get to higher star force and then transfer hammer over 
so you, so you can get relatively lower risk higher stars like pink bean belts into superior belts reinforced earrings into superior earrings uh that kind of and you know the meister rings into the superior rings maybe even solid rings into reinforced slash kind of treasure rings if you're into you know in up to that level um, these are all options to get your accessories further so that you don't have to over invest into abzo uh, and of course keep doing cra and stuff so that you can push your cra further because that stays with you the whole time um, so, so i just th use all my pieces for backups right and just never safeguard that stuff yeah basically yeah you you get the value out of not having to safeguard by having backups um, and you know you can join the ranks of people who <laughs> there's there's two groups of people who upgrade cra there's those people who don't blow up anything and have full 21 set and then there are those people who blow up like 30 pants and still haven't seen 19 or something there's <laughs> it seems to be pretty divided between those two groups and we'll see which uh which group you become a part of <laughs> um but yeah in general just like yeah from from high from low risk to high is like the priority for upgrading and then you just go one star at a time and as something becomes too high risk then it just drops from the list and then you keep going one star at a time with whichever whatever is left when there's like a giant uh, star forcing event basically does that make sense yeah for sure no and then you know as long as something booms or fails you just keep working on that one item that way you can just spend your money financially more efficiently Definitely do enjoy some efficiency. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, if you're Especially kind of when, stream. like the less time I have to spend on my Kana, the better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you'd, well, you do have to drop it as on this guy, so as long as you keep training at a decent rate, then uh, you should be fine. Um, we didn't really talk about the inner ability. Um, don't know if you have any kind of idea or plan for that. Um, I think that the. Right, the only thing that I can change there for the first line would be moving the attack to boss damage, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there's... My, Sorry? Yeah. My Pathfinder doesn't really benefit from the attack speed in her. No. Um, you could go for Mesoptane for a while. It does stack with everything and, you know, just make you a decent amount of money when you're training. Um, and it doesn't go... It doesn't come at a huge premium, I find. I find that 20% Mesoptane is really, really good. Um... That, that could be a possible other out as well. Um, but I think other than those two and this one you currently have, there's not too much to go off of for Pathfinder now. Even like chance to skip cooldown and that kind of stuff that doesn't really do much for you. Um, ideally, later is you get critical rate in there somewhere for second or third line so that your vicious shot gets even stronger, right? And then reroll, then lock that line and reroll the top with your honor experience to try to get back into the boss damage basically but until that point i find uh, in general i find mezzo obtained to be just super solid and just cranking up your rates while you're leveling up your character cool do you think the nine percent drop is fine to keep uh yeah but if you want to get into the mezzo you want to use circulators for that and save your honor experience so that does mean that you would roll over the nine percent drop okay. um but that's yeah that's yeah, that's kind of up to you, your discretion on what you want to do. But yeah, like Smilly says, he runs 20 mezzo, 10 drop on his Pathfinder. Uh, my arc has that as well, 19 mezzo, 15 drop. Like those um, those are just very solid. If you don't need the attack speed plus one or you don't need buff duration or something to get like insane access to damage, then r run, running with mezzo and drop for a long time is super valuable. Yeah, especially since I'm going to be going for 250. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that'll definitely pay for itself. Um, other than like daily bosses, what's the uh, easiest way to cap my like reward points to be able to get all the totems? Um, rewards. Oh, um, yeah. So there is a. I have a video on that on exclamation mark reward points. Oh. Um, one thing you probably are not on top of is maple m uh i actually do play that ah nice so that gives you 500 a day right do you have it yeah. linked i do yes uh the other things is is daily bosses and reward points um monster collection you can build that out over time basically passively generates reward points as well 
Um, yeah, and like the more weeklies you do, if you do weekly bosses on multiple characters, if you do them on different days, you can claim the reward points every time. If you do them on the same day, you can only reclaim them from the same boss once a day. So, so if, like you... if I do CRA on this character on Tuesday and then CRA on my Kana on Wednesday, I can get them both? Yes, exactly. Yeah, as long as you pick them up on that day and redeem them, and then the next day they'll become available again for the other character. That way you can uh, optimize that income a bit more as well. Um, yeah, yeah. The the video also talks about like Maple uh, Maple M and, and Monster Collection, but there's also like a link to Monster Collection, like which sets are easy to achieve, and uh, you know, so it makes it a little bit easier on like where to go to uh, to f to fill up on Monster Collection, basically, because you need to do a bunch of them to equip more slots, and you need to get the sets, and you know, some sets are hard inherently harder than other ones, etc. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you are wondering about? No, I think we're pretty sorted. Yeah. Okay. Um, well then let me know if there's anything that still pops up later. Maybe a note that you <laughs> had somewhere that you didn't find right now. Um, I'll always be, you know, I'm streaming all the time. So feel free to pop in and ask me at any time. Um, and I just, uh, wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Hope you get your uh, your scroll leveled up, uh, your scroll trained, so you can get access to the to the droplets because that'll be very nice for you. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. See you around. Up. Yep. You too. Bye bye. All right. Cool. Yeah. A little bit of a tricky situation with the accessories because everything is like. It's probably the most difficult situation so far that I had where it isn't super obvious. Like, just do this forehead. Because he truly is right in between where the accessories are kind of good enough. But there is a, definitely a step forward. But every step forward comes at the cost of having to roll out of stuff that is already pretty pretty damn good right now. So that is definitely a situation where I would have to like scratch my head a little bit as well and say like how can we move forward to this. Which is what I did. And we, 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 circled, <laughs> we circled the topic for a little bit but then you know bit through it. Um, definitely not an easy situation to, to move through. Um, we optimized the matrix a little bit. We could talk about link skills in the Legion. Slowly leveling the characters a little bit on the Legion will definitely um, get that 5k and that 6k then pretty soon. Um, 8k is, like I don't think, on its radar at all. <laughs> I think I'll be very happy with 5.5 and then with 6. Uh, of course, 5.5 because you can put 5 more characters in the grid and then 6 have access to the full grid. Uh, but yeah, if this was informational for you, I'm glad. Um, other Pathfinders out there, hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you. And if you'd like to have one of these sessions, check the description. Also check the description if you want to um, submit some data for me, either battle analysis, monster kill per hour, or training videos in Moonbridge and up. Let me know. I'm also currently, at least for today or for this week, sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This video isn't sponsored, but my stream is. Um, so if you want to help support me, sh make sure you tune into the stream. Um, check out exclamation mark raid. Help me out. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, you guys don't have to like, comment, and subscribe, and all that shit, or support me directly uh, with mezzo, uh, with money. But if you could do that for me, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. And thanks for watching.